Excellencies, colleagues, dear guests, ladies and gentlemen, last year our committee hosted the first ever UN commemoration of the Nagba to observe its 75th anniversary. Today, we again commemorate the events of 1948 and subsequent years, which led to the dispossession and displacement of approximately 750,000 Palestinians from their ancestral lands. One year has passed, and after the atrocities committed by Hamas and other militant groups on the 7th of October, the Israeli response continues to be disproportionate and indiscriminate. Breaches of norms by one group do not excuse breaches of international law and norms by another. What we have witnessed over the past seven months, much of it broadcast live across the globe and even by the victims themselves, is unparalleled in recent history. With Gaza being under constant attack and bombardment by Israeli forces, almost 40,000 Palestinians have been killed and almost 80,000 injured, the vast majority of whom women and children. That is, one in every 25 Gazans killed. One in every 25 Gazans killed. 70% of all buildings have been destroyed. Schools and universities are in rubble. Hospitals are not functioning. And in parallel, while the war on Gaza rages, Israeli attacks by its security forces and armed illegal settlers protected by them, those attacks on Palestinians in the occupied West Bank and East Jerusalem have increased. Palestinian land and buildings are expropriated. Palestinians are beaten and killed with impunity. The number of Palestinian detainees, often held without charge for extended periods of time, is increasing. This is the situation today. The Nakba of 1948 and today's Nakba in Gaza are not two separate, distinct events. Today's Nagba is repetition of the Nagba of 1948. And all this time in between, we witnessed Israel's occupation and dispossession of Palestinian property, denial of rights, arbitrary arrests, including of children, brutal and disproportionate use of force, Judaization of East Jerusalem and its cultural symbols, eviction, and displacement of its inhabitants. The Nagba, thus, is an ongoing process which has affected the Palestinian people over generations. International norms are flouted, and the perpetrator is seemingly immune from being held accountable. Palestinians are starving and under threat of famine. Humanitarian aid is not delivered in the amounts necessary. Humanitarians, including UN staff and journalists, are killed and injured with impunity, often despite previous coordination and promises of so-called safe routes. This is a dark time for international justice, for accountability under international law, for the rules-based international order that this organization was founded to uphold. Conflict is spreading in the Middle East. The Security Council appears paralyzed and member states divided. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, in this situation we ask ourselves, what can be done? The various actors and concerned parties, citizens of the states, civil society organizations and NGOs, <coughs> governments and international organizations, all play their part working together. 
And we have seen throughout the world how civil societies, civil servants, academics, students clamor for an end to this conflict, the return of all hostages, the return of historical justice, freedom, and protection for the Palestinian people. Within the United Nations, our committee plays a key role. We continued advocacy here in New York, in the General Assembly and the Security Council, through events like the one we are holding today, through the committee advocacy via our website and social media, our publications, the development of our of capacities of the Palestinian government, our international conferences, the panels and delegation visits we organize. Just a few, week, a few weeks ago, a committee delegation comprising of myself and uh, Minister Mansour visited Trinidad and Tobago, Guyana, and also it included also the uh, uh, ambassador of Cuba. We visited Tobago, Guyana, Trinidad, and Trinidad and Tobago, Guyana in the headquarters of CARICOM, the Caribbean community. In the context of that visit, four countries have officially recognized the state of Palestine, Barbados and Jamaica in April, Trinidad and Tobago and the Bahamas in May. Thus, by now, all CARICOM members and almost the whole Caribbean has done so. And we hope that this recent wave of support will carry toward the rest of the region and beyond. A key aspect of the efforts towards ending the war on Gaza, ending the occupation, ending the Palestinians' suffering is the work in our sphere, that of international law and relations, on ensuring that the rules we set for ourselves, the nations of the world, that those rules apply to everyone, that nobody is above the law, and that grave breaches of international law and norms must have consequences. In short, that the weak should be protected from the attacks of the strong. In this, the vast majority of member states and indeed peoples of the world stand together. We also call upon the international community, member states and society alike, to redouble our efforts to end the occupation and this ongoing Nagba and bring to reality the inalienable rights of the Palestinian people, including to self-determination and independence and a just resolution to the plight of Palestinian refugees. Our committee will continue to work towards the day that the Palestinian people will enjoy all their inalienable rights and live in a state of their own in peace and prosperity based on the two-state solution that we all know so well. That yet, that has for too long eluded implementation. We are determined to continue to stand with the Palestinian people so that one day the Nakba will end. And we call upon all others, member states, organizations, civil society, to do the same. I thank you.